Morning, beloved. I'm going to give a summary of what Purim is, the book of Esther, chapters 1 through 8, why we celebrate, why we remember it, why we need to, because just like our body needs discipline, so do we need to remember things, to discipline ourselves and have these feasts of remembrance. It's not for us. It's for the Father who just blesses us with love, joy, peace. There's no law to do it. We're not under the law, but we get to do it. We're not forced. We get to do this. So it's a good practice. Let me describe why. I'm going to summarize this story. Why it's important to remember what was done in history. Now, during Queen Esther's time, her parents had passed away and Mordecai, her uncle, adopted her. Now, during this time, King Ahasuerus was ruler. This is about 50 years after Daniel. Subsequent right to Ezra um, preaching and prophesying to the people of Israel, the whole Jewish nation. Um, this is about 486 to 465 BC. And King Ahasuerus is realizing King, Queen Vashti is now becoming a feminist, uh, not wanting to honor and respect the king anymore because there's a mutual honor and respect. And he realizes he needs someone else before all the people rebel and start... Um, becoming in a war man against woman woman against man king calls for all the beautiful virgins in the town to come to have a beauty contest to replace this rebellious jezebel queen found as beautiful and favored and she hides her jewish descent as mordecai her uncle advised her not to bring that up yet must have been an insight from the holy spirit instance in the story where two of the eunuchs had a plot to kill the king and mordecai found out gave the message to esther and esther really the message to King Ahasuerus and had them hanged in the gallows, and it was proven true. I'm Haman, one of the king's right hand men who is highly favored, had many sons, many riches, um, started ordering the people to bow to him and pay him respect as if he was a god. And uh, Mordecai refused to because he knew there's only one true God and he's not going to disobey and honor a man subsequent created by God. Who <laughs> man who did not create anything to bow to him as if he's the king of everything he finds out about Mordecai's nationality his beliefs and he gets really mad and he threatens and he makes a decree to pay anyone to destroy the entire Jewish race he makes a plot and a war line to go in kill all the men women and children and take all their goods kill anyone of this Jewish descent that doesn't honor and respect him and the king as a god I weeps goes into sackcloth and Esther finds out so she starts a three-day fast once she hears about what's going on how there's this plot Haman's trying to kill the entire people tells her approach the king now on the third day she had the courage and strength from God to approach the king to create a feast for Haman to bring him in to confront him with his evil somehow she invites the enemy to feast at the table um, kind of like how God does we feast before our enemies. Esther has the same parallel here. A lot of ripples throughout history in this story. Feast. Uh, she made a wonderful feast. Haman, the wicked one, is actually satisfied and pleased. But as he's leaving the feast, whom Mordecai, Esther's uncle, had attended this feast, um, he has people stand up and give him honor. But Mordecai, once again, refuses to stand. He sits, and this enrages Haman. He causes Haman to go off into a spirit of pride where he starts to glorify his riches, the large number of his sons, his inheritance, his honor from the king, and just starts to basically praise himself about his promotions over the servants and all the people and all the peasants of the king, how he should deserve honor as if he was a god. Wife and friends try to comfort Haman and tell him to build a gallows to hang Mordecai. It's kind of ironic now. The story takes a twist. Uh, the king asks to meet with um, Haman since he's his right-hand man. And they realize they've never paid Mordecai respect for discovering the two eunuchs who plotted to kill the king. Not telling Haman this, the king asks, what should we do to honor someone who has pleased the king? And Haman speaks from his heart, oh... Give him the king's robe, let him ride on the king's horse, let all the people praise him as if he were the king's best friend, kind of attitude. <laughs> and then the king's like, oh, what a great idea. Let's do this to Mordecai. Let's just set off. He is ready to just 
hang Mordecai and all the people. And Esther knows now's the time I better step in. This was the last chance. So she told the king, Haman is an evil man wanting to kill me and my people. Please do something about it, king. Haman tries to beg and plead the queen for his life. He becomes enraged. The spirit of anger's on him. He thinks he's going to try and kill the queen because Amon's laying on the couch next to the queen begging for his life. And he's also drunk. And the king decides to execute him on the same gallows that he planned on executing Mordecai. Uh, Esther's uncle. The king then issues a decree to stop the war and the execution of the Jews all throughout the 120 provinces of the Persian Empire. Uh, and then great fear of the Lord fell on the entire Persian Empire for the Jews. It's a good fear not to touch them, not to mess with them. That's the spirit of the power of God. Mordecai gets put in charge of the king's entire estate. He was the biggest steward of the entire kingdom. One of the greatest positions. So you can serve everyone in a amazing way. Steward. Billy Purim is a remembrance of... Thanking God for defeating our enemies, to stopping the wicked schemes of the enemy, um, calling out the evil schemes, not being afraid, uh, using fasting to tap into the boldness we need in times where people are against life, against laws and opinions that don't value life. That simple. So, some things you can do during the day before Purim is to fast, to remember that they fasted to awaken their hearts to the power of God even more, to be in tune so that the body and its desires are out of the way while we're taking on this important task. Um, some things you can do is read the story um, during the day of Esther, Purim, uh, which is actually this Friday, this Friday the 26th. Um, another thing to do is to give to the poor in any way, shape, or form with joy in your heart. Obviously, we practice this all throughout the year, but this is just a remembrance of doing it. It's a good thing, just like to read the scriptures. Um, and to feast, to sing, drink, and laugh with one another, uh, to send food items off to friends that they can consume, even Jewish-related food to remind us of our ancestry. And then to have special prayers, reading of Exodus 17, 8 through 16. And the children can masquerade around as good biblical characters, kind of like Mordecai and Esther. And use their gifts and talents, whether it be beauty, whether it be music, fancy, dancing, singing, acting, craftsmanship, prophesying evangelism. Let them have fun.